ever since uh, the days of jazz musicians. My father was one, and we used to work with Ella Fitzgerald and Quincy Jones, and we always used to hear about them coming over to Paris. And they'd say, if Paris loves you, the whole world loves you. So it's been uh, our motto. France started er liking Toto and uh, supporting us at a very early age. So we really have a loyal bond. We have a love affair going with the French audience that I think doesn't exist anywhere else, you know what I mean? They've always been there for us. They're just great artists, you know? You look at all the art and culture. I mean, I was going around uh, yesterday, still seeing the Eiffel Tower, going to a restaurant, and I thought the restaurant was old. I thought it may be like 90 or 100 years old, and this restaurant was, was started in 1772. I couldn't believe it. We were the only ones in the restaurant. It was over on the Seine, and uh, it's just the, the history here is just, uh, uh, breathtaking to us people in California who like the oldest thing there is 50 years old <laughs> you know so we love the audience here I read in Elton John one time he said if you give people uh, inspired performances good songs with decent lyrics great production great melody and, and it has a really good feel to it, dance feel to it. I think you combine all those things, but try and keep the, the bar raised high and don't just throw a bunch of mediocre schlock out there. I think that people sense that. I think when you get the right chemistry, I think people see, feel the, the, the results of the formula somehow. And that it's, it's really a magical, intangible kind of thing. It's like when I hear classical music, when I hear Debussy and stuff, I go, because my father was a composer, I go, how can a guy sitting there writing, and all he's doing is writing notes, 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 notes down, and when he drops his hand, an orchestra plays, and that sound comes out. It's the magic of it, you know? If I go to a concert, and I go to a McCartney concert, I'm gonna to wanna to hear at least a couple of Beatle things that they do, or, you know, Fleetwood Mac uh, concert, I don't wanna hear, I wanna hear a couple of hits. So that's why we're kind of limiting, there's not a whole lot of hits that we're, we have about three or four maybe we're playing, but we opted for playing some of our deeper cuts. And uh, part of the challenge, and part of the great thing about being in Toto is they find a way to make it new every night. They'll find some different way to play it, or. Uh, the crowd helps us be excited, and it's almost like the first time we played it every time we go out. So it's, uh, it's a challenge. That's the challenge. People usually don't do a whole lot of new material on their uh, live tours, except for Sting. And uh, we thought that we liked this material so much that we wanted to try it out and see how the crowd liked it and see how much the crowd would let us do our new material, you know what I mean? As opposed to being so not uh, courageous or not confident, you know? We're confident in this material here, and uh, I think that the crowd will like it hearing something new from us. I would like to add Spiritual Band sometime that we did on the Fib album, which is a song I did, and it was a very lyrical, uh, story-driven song. And, uh, but it takes me to sing, I have to sing it and I have to be in good voice to do it. And it's kind of thing where, you know, oh, every band's a little apprehensive about trying to do that as a material, but I'd like to sneak it in sometime or later. Also, um, uh, Spanish Steps of Rome. I would like to do that song sometime too. I have this L Leonard Cohen side of myself that I like Leonard Cohen and I like singing down in that range. And the band always kind of looks at me out of the corner of their eye when I'm, I'm doing that. But I would very much like to sing some of the more personalized songs instead of always the, 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 the kind of high rock and roll songs. That's part of the attraction and we like making music. And I think it's like an actor that goes on a stage play. I, I, I equate it to musicians that just do records are like TV actors. But these are like, sta we're like stage actors. We get to play two hours every night. So it's like doing a play, a good play, a modern play or a Shakespearean play or something where you get to hone your craft every night. So I think that's what musicians like to do is play every night. What we were trying to do, we, we made something that was actually sounded like a decent record. And when you hear Hold the Line and you hear Child's Anthem and uh, I'll Supply the Love, that we were very, although we'd played on other people's records and we knew that we could do that, to do it ourselves is just like, if like kids come along and all of a sudden they're making a Lamborghini or they're making a, a car, a Vespa or something, but you actually make something with your hands that comes out and people actually like. So it was a lot of uh, satisfaction for us. Me, I like the first album.
sometimes I like to think of these Toto albums as my solo album. Yeah. I, li- I always told people I think of Toto albums as my solo album because it's the way I would do it. Is I would do it the same musicians. If I could sing better, I would have been singing all this stuff here, you know. So it's a lot. There's a lot of me in these albums, but now I'm to the point where I'm starting to write the kind of material like Spanish Steps of Rome's uh, on the new one, um, All the Tears That Shine. I may put out an album of my stuff that's more. I can only can compare it to Leonard Cohen. He's so much greater, but my personalized stuff that I like to do, you know, it's a little more introspective and stuff. So in the next year or two, you may hear something from me.